Namaste and good morning, everyone. Let's start the class with some prayers. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat, Parbrahma, Tasmay Shri, Guru Venamaha, Om Bho Bhavaswaha, Tatsavitra Vare Neyam, Vargo Deva Sedhi Mahi, Diyo Yonaha, Prachodayat, Astoma Satgamya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamya, Mrityorma Amritam Gamya, Om Sehna Vavatu, Sehna Bhunatu, Sehviryam Karvavahi, Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu, Ma Vidvi Shavahi, Om Shanti 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 Om. Today is Saturday and Saturday we study Vivek Churamani by Adi Shankaracharya Ji. And last time when we were studying, we were we ended the class with the verse number 278. So over here, this great Acharya is giving us the means to end the superimpositions. Superimpositions means what is real? We have superimposed something else on it and we need to end it. So what is the superimposition on us? This body, this mind, this intellect, this ego, that's all superimpositions and how to end it. So in verse number 278, that's where we ended our last week's class. Over there, Shankaracharya is saying, Tamas is destroying both by the Rajas and Satava. Rajas by Satava and Satava is destroyed on purification. Therefore, solely depending upon Satva, deny entirely your superimpositions. That means live a sattvic life, a pure life. Okay, Not just only a sattvic food. Sure, sattvic food is very important. But sattvic environment, sattvic thoughts, sattvic intellect, everything sattvic. Let go of the rajas from your life. Only then there will be a selfless dedication in us. And with that selfless dedication, devotion will heighten towards God and the Guru. And with such an inspired spirit of dedication, sincerely and lovingly, with this, a very cheerful tempo, we can walk on this path. And that's all these vasanas, they'll get weaker and weaker in us. Devotion to the Lord, anxiety to realize even, will gather a new momentum. Okay, so sattvic vasanas. So cultivate the sattvic vasanas. So sattvic vasanas will destroy the rajasik also. Okay. So this is what he is trying to tell us. So increase a sattva, develop a sattvic nature, reject entirely your super impositions. Now today let's start the class with the 279. Prarabdham pushyati vapu iti nishyatehe nishyalaha. Dharyam alambye yatnen swadhyaye asapnyam kuru prarabdham, the prarabdha. Okay, prarabdha is the karmas which we have brought with us from the storehouse of the karmas. Those are called prarabdha karam. Okay, so from the storehouse means the sanchit karam. A handful of the Sanchit Karam we have brought with us. Those are the Prarabdha Karam. Pushyati nourishes Vapu, the body. Iti das nishchate knowing for certain. Nishchala remain, remain undisturbed. Nishchala Dharyam, courage or resolve. 
Alambia, depending upon or taking resort to Yatnen with effort. Swadhyay Sapnem Kuru. Deny your superimposition. Okay. So knowing for certain that your prarabd will nourish this body, remain undisturbed and with courage deny entirely your superimposition. Because if you look at it, most of our worries are regarding the preservation of this body. It's like an anxiety in our mind. If we pay attention, it's about the body. What will happen? It's getting old. Who will take care of me? These anxieties, they keep on multiplying in us. And they create storms in our mind. And th those storms in our mind destroy our sadhana. That you might have done for years. So this great Acharya is telling us, this body is what it is because of its prarabdha. And prarabdha was created by us. So because of your vasana, you have taken this body. Today, this body moves. Every minute, it's expressing its powerful vasanas. And this is a mighty law. It was born, it will keep on going. For the purpose it was born for. So understand this well. Strengthen your mind. And protect your mind from the agitations. He says, have courage. Even if your body is not keeping healthy, in spite of you taking care of it, because a lot of people, they exercise, they eat well, they keep the body clean, still they have some physical ailments. That is because of the prarabd. So that's why he says, muster up some courage. Reach this discriminative conclusion through intelligent reflection. <clears throat> that's what it means, knowing for certain that you're certainly. How do we know something certainly with this kind of a discrimination? Instead of creating more vasanas, more agitations in your mind that, oh, I exercise every day. I don't even eat that much. Still, I'm gaining weight. Prarabd. Remember that. Prarabd. So knowing for certain that your prarabd will nourish this body, remain undisturbed. See, disturbances at the level of mind. And courage we better have the dhare. Deny entirely your superimposition. So with all that, what you need to do is uh, deny the superimposition. That you are the body or you are the mind or you are the intellect. Deny the superimposition and be certain about uh, who you are. That's what he's telling us. Okay, Because our mind just gets uh, too absorbed and obsessed about the physical part of our body. Okay, now let's look at number 280. Again, the same uh, um, um, message he is giving it to us with all these verses. Na aham jivaha param brahm iti atat vyapriti purvakam atat vasna vegtaha prapt swa adhyas apanyam kuru. So this is verse number 280. Na aham jiva. I'm not the limited self jeeva Okay. See, I am a atma, not the jeeva atma. So, na aham jeeva. Param brahma, I am the supreme brahma. Iti means thus, a tat vyavriti purvakam. 
eliminating all that is the non-self. Atat vasana vegta, through the force of your vasanas, the past urges, prapt, manifests. So adhyas apanyam guru, deny your superimpositions. So again, he is giving us another way to deny the superimposition. I am not the jeev. I am the supreme Brahma. So I'm not limited. I am part of that Brahma. Thus by eliminating all that is not self. And what is not self? Anything other than the self is not self. So by eliminating all that is not self. And this elimination is not at the physical level. It's at the mental level. Deny entirely your superimpositions which manifest through the propulsion of your past urges, the vasanas. Okay? So tell yourself, I am not the jeev. I'm not limited. I'm not conditioned by body, mind and intellect. I am the supreme Brahma. That's what I was telling you. All these celebrations which we go through, all those different special days, whether today or yesterday or day before yesterday, the Diwali and the Bhayaduj and all those, the Rakri and the Janamashmi, all of that is a reminder to us that we are part of God and God is with us always. Reminder. Somehow in this materialistic world, we have forgotten that godly element and we have been obsessed only with the physical part of these celebrations. What to wear, what to eat, what to buy, what to give, all those things, physical part. While doing all that, we should never forget the godly part, the divine part. So the all-pervading and eternal reality I am. Those thoughts should be in our mind always. Always. That kind of a music while even talking to somebody, while doing any kind of a activity, this music in the background that I am a part of God. Aham Brahmasmi. Because those are positive thoughts. The positive thoughts will remove slowly the negative ideas which have been gathered with the flood of vasanas. It's almost like a pouring the good water, the clean water into the bottle and pretty soon we'll see there's only the clean water. All the mud has been taken, gotten out. So keep on pouring the positive. I'm part of God. And what are the negative thoughts? I am limited. I am the body. I am this mind which stays disturbed. Or I am this intellect with a lot of doubts. Those are all expressions of the vasanas in our heart. So those vasanas, they have replaced. Originally, it was all positive, then negativity came. And now we got to again replace the negative with the positive. So deny entirely all your superimpositions, entirely, not just a little bit. Let's look at the next one, 281. Shrutyaha, yukteha, swa gyatvaha, sarva, Atmeya Atmanaha Kochit Abhastaha Prapta Su Adhyasapanyam Guru Shrutiya through the scriptures. Shrutis are the primary scriptures. Shruti. Yukteha by reasoning. Swa Anubhutiya by direct experience. Gyatva having realized. 
सर्व आत्मेय आत्मन सर्व आत्मेय आत्मन Your own self to be the self in all. Okay. So, serve Atmayam Atmana. Kwa chit, even a little, or at any time. Abhastaha as an experience. Prapt, attaining or rising. Swa adhyasa panyam kuru. Deny your. super imposition having realized your own self to be the self in all through scriptures by reasoning and from your own direct experience deny entirely your super impositions even when it traces slight trace appears so that means that you don't want to even take a chance with a small trace of this this superimposition got to be very careful about it very vigilant about it because a trace a pretty soon trace becomes big a little bud becomes a flower and flower becomes a fruit and fruit gives lot of seeds so we want to get rid of uh, at the bud level even a trace we got to remove it and this a uh, trace could be trace is uh, i am the body even a little bit of it uh, got to let it go okay the term shrutiya is uh, equivalent to that shravan we often say Shrutya means shravan, hearing. Yuktya, ruktya reminds us of the method of manan. Yuktya, reasoning, reflection, and swa anubhutya. It means nidhi dhyasan. Okay, so these are the similar terms, but the meaning is same. So whether we say shrutiya, yuktiya, swa anubhutiya, or we say shravan manan and nidhedhyasa, same thing. So by means of what has been read and understood from the Upanishads, by intelligent argumentation, by your own first-hand experience, we just don't want to leave our sadhana. at the reading level or reflecting level we want to take it to the level where we experience it too so these three methods through these we apprehend the truth we must get fully released from the superimpositions by these three that's what he is trying to tell us so the, it's almost like a process the technique because goal is to apprehend the atma the self in you and then that same self everywhere else also that's what we need to experience okay so shravan manan nidhi dhyasan with this triple practice we need to experience our self and the same self everywhere else also so sarv atmyam atmana because we know while doing sadhana whenever the ego or egocentric vulgarities and what are those egocentric vulgarities those are the kaam krodh lobh moh ahankar the lust the greed anger passion they appear they appear be watchful destroy them immediately otherwise our mind will rush out into the sense objects again and again this is what we have to work on it is so necessary that we guard ourselves against all these vulgarities 
So the triple path of spiritual living. It's not just studying once. Study should be part of our daily routine. Reflection should be part of our daily routine. Nididhyasana, it should be continuously. So how much we have moved towards this experience, self-experience, this is what really matters. Okay? That I am the Atma. So ultimately, he says, come to deny entirely all your superimpositions. So repeated advice by this great Acharya to us. Let's look at 282 now. Anadan visargabhyam ishat na astihi kriya mune. Tat ek nishthaya nityam sva adhyas apanyam kuru. Anadan visargabhyam. With accepting or rejecting. Okay? And an means the food. Anadan visargabhyam. So, it's like a eating food. And what is rejecting food? That means expulsion or evacuating. That's visarg means, visargabhya. Ishat, whatever. Na astihi, there is no kriya, action, mune of the sage. That means, therefore, ek nishthaya with single pointed abidance. Nityam, continuous. Swa adhyas apanyam kuru, deny your superimposition. So he's repeating this last part in all these verses because this is the means are for this. This is the goal. Okay. So since he has no idea of eating or evacuating, the sage has no relationship with action. So this kind of a sannyasi or a muni has become, has reached to that level where identification with the self and the soul is all the time. It's not that he is not eating and he is not evacuating. All this is happening. But this is all happening with the help of the nature. He is not doing it. Actually, we are not doing it either, but our, our uh, identification is constantly with the body. If we can identify with the Atma, all this will happen even better. Okay? So he says, since he has no idea of eating or evacuating, the sage has no relationship with the idea of this action. And Lord Krishna called this what? Karam Sanyas. Karam Sanyasi is like that. That's why the whole chapter Vedvyas has given in Bhagavad Gita, the chapter number five, Karam Sanyas. No idea of these actions. Therefore, through continuous involvement in the contemplation of Brahma, Deny entirely all your superimpositions. So he's telling us to become karam sannyasis because that is the goal. So eating is not just a putting the food into the mouth or swallowing it. It could be the anxiety for it. Plan for its preparation. All the excitement for it. Or even the very expectation of a sweet taste of it or even the smell for it. Ultimately, we eat it. So all those excitements which go with it, reduce that. How much time we spend in this, every single day. 
And this eating is not only with the mouth eating. It could be from other sense of organs too. What we want to hear, what we want to touch, what we want to smell. Anything which is going in. So food in the Upanishad, Upanishadic language, food means all sense objects. Eaten by the sense organs. So anadan means actually the, the correct translation could be reception of sense objects, any kind of object. So not from the mouth alone, through the eyes also, through the ears also, through the touch and taste also, all of it. So, and our response to the, these stimuli received, then, then there's an excretion or expulsion, that is a viseric. A person who can detach from all this is called a muni. So we got to strive to learn the art of meditation so that slowly and carefully we develop in ourselves an attitude of holding ourselves at a neutral level. That's why Lord Krishna mentioned the likes and the dislikes, reduce them. We should not have very strong likes and dislikes. Come to the neutral part. And this Muni word, Muni, Muni is like a mananashil person, a person who reflects a lot. It could be in a serious thinker. And we know that serious thinker is not normally get into this petty reflexes because there is something very serious happening internally. This petty differences, he's not concerned about because he is engrossed into the highest. That's a Muni. Always contemplating upon the one ideal, ek tat ek nishthaya. That's how this person act on in this world. Even though outside get he seems like extremely engaged, but internally and that nishta is for the Brahm, the Supreme Self. And that's how he denies entirely all the superimpositions. Next one, 283. Tat asi adi Brahm atma ek now we are very much familiar with this. Arising from great Vedic saying such as that thou are, etc. So these are the Mahavakyas, right? Brahma Atma Etva Bodhata by means of the knowledge of the identity of Brahm and Atma. Okay. So Atma is nothing but part of Brahm. Brahmani with Brahm Atam Tva Dadeyaye for strengthening your identification. Dadeyaye means strength. Swa adhyasapanyam kuru, deny your super imposition. By means of the realized knowledge of the identity of Brahm and Atma, arising from such great maxims of the Vedas as that thou art. Deny entirely your superimpositions in order to strengthen your identification with Brahm. So another mean is again giving it to us. So these declarations of the Upanishads, 
which point out the identity of the individual self with the self present everywhere. Anytime our mind gets moved away from this, bring it back with these Mahavakyas. That is the reason we got to remember these Mahavakyas or any Guru Mantra. Okay, that is, that is the reason. Normally we think that these Guru Mantras or other Mantras are to attain something in this world. No. Whether it's a Guru Mantra or whether these Mahavakyas, these are all for us to connect back to that higher reality and shift your attention away from these worldly things. Okay, not to gain something over here. We got to move away from it. Because we all know that substratum for my life is the very substratum for the whole universe. And we got to have this intimate experience with this. We don't want to just live, leave this at the level of a theory or intellectual apprehension. We got to have the experience of this. So that's why he used this very strong word here, dad AI, the deep confirmed experience. Not just a weak experience, confirmed experience, then you cannot be shaken away. When you know this for certainly, then nobody can shake your mind away. We have had experience, right now we think we have the experience of that money will solve our problems. That has become a very strong for us, very strong vasana. That's why everybody runs after the money. But this great Rishi is telling us that turn this around, have a strong understanding and experience of this self is a self everywhere. It must be firm and deep experience. So as firm as our experience today is about the material world. Okay. 284. Aham bhavasya dehe asmin nishesh vilyavadhi savdhanen yuktatmaha so, adhyas apanyam kuru. Aham bhavasya of the notion, of the I notion, aham bhav. Okay, the feeling that I am this body. This is a aham bhav. Dehe asmin in this body. Ni shesh vilyavadhi till it is completely rooted out. So, that means until. The sense of I is destroyed along with any kind of a vasanas, residual impressions. Nishesh. Nishesh means there should not be anything, no remainder. Okay, not even a, even a spot of it. So just like if we want to clean something, we Make sure that all, all the color is gone, whatever is spilled on it. So, nishesh. Savdhanen, with vigilance. Yuktatma, being a man of concentration. Yuktatma. Sva adhyas apanyam kuru, deny your superimposition. Again, the same word. So, till the identification with the body is completely rooted out. With vigilance and concentration. Deny entirely all your superimpositions. Again and again he is telling us because question might come into our mind. How long should I practice? Should I keep on continuing this? I have done this sadhana for so long. Should I stop now? So Shankaracharya Ji very categorically is answering this kind of a question to us. How long should we do it? He says, till the attitude that I am this body ends totally with no trace remaining. 
Now, if you are there, sure, stop your sadhana. It's almost like, hey, how long should I keep on washing this piece of cloth which has some stain on it? Keep on washing until all the stain is gone. That's what we'll tell somebody. If somebody asks us, how long should I do it? So that's why this great Acharya is telling us, keep on practicing. And a very firm practice. Stay vigilant about it. Not a superficial. We got to look at what kind of a practice do we have? Is our practice, our sadhana to this level or not? That's why he used the word savdhan over here. Savdhan, be careful. Be vigilant. So the superimposition has to be done away with very carefully with all vigilance. Anything, something very important. Eh? Aren't we more careful about that? This is the most important task of our life. Most important. This is why we are here in this beautiful human body. And we have forgotten it. So that's why these great acharyas, they keep on reminding us. Try to remove this misconception with the great concentration. through study, reflection, and meditation. Calmly, slowly, keep on going, keep on going. Let's do one more, then we'll stop this class. Pratitihi jeev jagtoho swapanvat bhatihi yavtaha Tavat nirantram vidvan swa adhyas apanyam kuru. Pratitihi perception. Jeev jagatoho of the jeev and the world. Jagat is the world. Swapan vat dream like. Bhati persists. Yavata as long as. Tavat so long. Nirantra, Nirantram continuously, with one, O learned one, Swa Adhyasa Kuru, deny your superimpositions. He says, O learned one, see anybody who's studying something like this is learned. How many people really study something like this? So we do have interest in it. So he's encouraging us by saying, oh, learned one, as long as even a dreamlike perception of the world of objects and of the experiencing ego persists, continuously strive to deny entirely all your superimpositions. So he, over here, the emphasis is that till the jeev and jagat distinction. That means the subject and object relationships appear even as a dream. The practice of self-withdrawal has to be continued. So do not stop. So the practice will stop only when there is a individuality has entirely gone. Even it seems like a dream, still keep on practicing. Okay? And some people read it like this. They say, even if there is a dream-like perception of the subject-object relationship, the practice of self-withdrawal has to be continued till the sadhak enters completely into samadhi. Samadhi. Okay? So, no matter how you read it, this really means 
that keep on practicing keep on practicing don't ever become careless about it no i i know this is just a dream i don't want to practice anymore i am there now because there are some certain personalities who come into this world like a lord krishna came king janak was there what do they do those are called like a kark purush avatar sals they are called avatar sals still they keep on continuing practicing i mean you have seen or heard and a read in the bhagavad puran lord krishna when he gets up in the morning what does he do meditate and we think that we don't need to do it what does lord shiva do meditation okay so we got to learn from the examples of these great personalities they knew about it but they still did it still practiced so we got to continue practicing okay and there are certain personalities that stay completely in meditation they don't even come out like a lord shiva see lord krishna lord ram they came over here in a human form to do certain task or gurus of every faith they come because they have a certain agenda but even then they practice all this then certain personalities they don't come as incarnates but they are practicing too they are in deep samadhi all the time so that's why he is asking us to practice practice meditation keep your mind fixed in brahma don't think that you are above these great personalities we got to do our part okay let's stop it here and we'll start he still has few more verses for us to uh, give some direction that means to end the superimposition because we are under the grip of this maya very strong so he are, he is giving us the methods but ultimately practice we must do no acharya will say all practice for you no guru will say that no god incarnate will say that okay so practice we must do Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnase Purnamadaye Purnameva Visheshyate Om Shanti 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 Om